love's redeeming work is done. The task complete. Sin's winter is past. God, who loves us, who loved us from the very beginning, sent his son Jesus to cancel the debt we owed. He took on himself the worst of humanity. He nailed our sin to a cross. We were helpless in the face of that sin, but Jesus, the resurrection and the life, came and was wounded to redeem us. And death that had once been so invincible was conquered. Oh, rejoice for the good news of redemption. But do not forget the terrible cost. Jesus took on our flesh and lived among us. He endured pain and rejection and was abandoned by even his closest friends. We must not forget. The cross was God's work to set us free. Jesus must be crucified or there can be no resurrection, no redemption. Come then, see the sinless Savior lay down his life. Come, see Jesus the resurrection of the Messiah. earthly ministry, Jesus moved with love and compassion among the people. Never had there been anyone like him, caring for the lowly, eating with tax collectors, welcoming the hurting. He touched lepers, healed the blind and the lame, and he forgave sin. He preached a new kingdom, a kingdom of love. Thousands put their trust in him as Messiah. As he became more and more popular with the people, the dangerous undercurrents that had been brewing between Jesus and the religious leaders erupted. Then came the day when at the tomb of his dear friend Lazarus, Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come forth. Jesus brought his friend back to life. Even some of the Pharisees put their trust in him as Messiah then. But now his fate was sealed. Caiaphas, the high priest, called a special session of the Sanhedrin. They all agreed. 
Jesus must die. It was into this dangerous atmosphere that Jesus and his disciples journeyed to Jerusalem for the start of Passover. Pilgrims from everywhere had come to the holy city, and the name on everyone's lips, Jesus. Would he dare come to the city to celebrate the feast? Every question is answered as Jesus and his disciples appear on the road from Bethany. Who is it, they asked, who's coming? Why, it's Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth. Countless numbers of pilgrims rushed out to meet him, palm branches waving, coats thrown to the ground. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. But they did not see his tears. Neither did they understand his intent. Jesus was already the king. Now he would come as the Passover lamb. He had completed the work of ministry. Only one journey remained, the journey to the cross.
the time had come. All scripture would be fulfilled. Jesus will be betrayed by one of his own, one of the twelve that he chose. But first, there would be one last meal, one last Passover. It was sunset when they filed into the upper room. As they reclined around a table, Jesus looked at each dear face. I've greatly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Then, standing and removing his outer clothing, he took a basin and began to wash their feet. Do you understand what I've done to you? If I, the master and teacher, wash your feet, you must wash each other's feet. These are his last moments, and Jesus is still teaching. But now there is a new urgency. Love one another as I've loved you. Seek to serve rather than to be served. That he loved them was evident. The sorrow in his face, unbearable. Now, acting as host, Jesus reached for a loaf of bread and blessed it. He gave it to his disciples. Take, eat, this is my body. He poured the wine and lifted the cup to heaven. Take, drink, this is my blood. This is the new covenant. But they didn't understand. This was a new covenant, and it would reclaim all that had been lost. The battle had begun in earnest.
Now Jesus and the twelve leave the upstairs room and make their way to the Mount of Olives, where they head eastward to a garden called Gethsemane, which means the oil press. It's a place Jesus knows well. So does his betrayer. Leaving his disciples to keep watch, Jesus falls on his face in deep despair. And just as he has done his entire life, he turns to his father. My father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. In great sorrow, Jesus prays until finally he surrenders completely. Moments later, lanterns appear and a crowd enters the garden with torches and swords. Judas, the betrayer, is in the lead. Jesus steps forward. Whom do you seek? Jesus the Nazarene, they respond. And just as God speaks his name to Moses at the burning bush, I am who I am. Just as God tells Moses to say to Israel, I am has sent me. Jesus responds by using his Father's name. Jesus is the I am of the burning bush. I am he. Hearing this, they drew back and fell to the ground. Who calms the sea? Who forms the land? The first and last, the great.
eternal longing of God is fulfilled in Jesus. This has been the Father's plan from the beginning. This is how he will redeem the world. Jesus confirms it. It is his own choosing. No one takes my life from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. But the cost, the cost is terrible. The Sanhedrin has already condemned him. By sunrise, Jesus' fate is sealed. As he stands silently before Pilate, accusation after accusation is leveled against him. Pilate gives orders. Jesus is flogged. He's blindfolded and mocked. A braided crown of thorns is placed on his head, a scepter in his hand. A scarlet robe is thrown across his shoulders. There now, the king's attire is complete. Finally, the same crowd that welcomed him into Jerusalem just days before turns against him. What shall I do with this one you call the king of the Jews? Pilate asks. Crucify him! Crucify him, they shout. There is no one left to speak on his behalf. Jesus is sentenced to die. Hope fell silent that day. In agony, Jesus suffers alone.
for those who stood there that day, for those who loved Jesus, all hope was lost. There could be no dawn that would change this devastation. Despair and fear overcame them. They were there when the earth split open in violent protest. They had seen their Lord crucified. There is a final word in the redemption of man, and upon it alone stands our forgiveness. It was uttered by Jesus that day from the cross. Finished. It is finished. Darkness had had its hour. Its power was spent. Jesus looked death in the face, and it was his love alone that vanquished it. Once and for all time, Jesus entered the most holy place into the very presence of God. He destroyed the power of death. By his own blood, he restored us. Through one man's sin came into the world. Now one man alone could secure our redemption. 
Jesus, fully God and fully man, Jesus, our brother. Jesus, our most merciful and faithful high priest, you are the living bread who was broken. You took on our likeness and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. While we were sinners, you died for us, forever tearing down the wall that separated us from the Father and paying the price to purchase back everything we'd lost, our birthright. You ushered in the new covenant and sealed it with your own blood. Our redemption was indeed costly. You are the radiance of God, the exact imprint of His nature. Forever you are exalted, eternal God and Savior. Amen.
We have been witness to indestructible love. This is the initiative of a father who would stop at nothing to redeem his children. There has never been a mystery so unfathomable. Jesus came to destroy the works of the enemy. He came to restore us. He would accomplish for us what we could not. There would be a dawn after all, and it would begin for us at the empty tomb of Jesus, where on that final morning, a lone woman knelt weeping for the loss of her Savior. One voice alone could quiet her tears. Woman, why are you crying? Why do you seek the living among the dead? And with that voice, morning broke. Darkness was shattered and she saw, the world saw, the glory of the only begotten Son, alive. Alive, and because he is, because he conquered death, we too can live. The sting of death is gone. For we have seen Jesus, our Lord and our God. Let every knee bow and every tongue confess that Jesus the Messiah is Lord, to the glory of the Father. Amen. Oh